Cam, listen, it's a great, it's it's like, you know, Roy Kent, man. You get that comeback story, you know. He hey, doesn't. Oh, he doesn't come back? Oh, okay. No, he comes back. <laughs> I'm not going to ruin it for you. Don't ruin it for me. Don't ruin it for me. It's good. He's there. He's, He's exactly there. where he meant to be. He's, uh, there. He's there. He's there. He's there. I got to go to a Christmas. I got to go to some British. I want to go to a British football yeah. game, man. We got to go to like, uh, what's it called? Um. Manchester United. Yeah, man. You just get the real fans. Is it dangerous? Like, you the might not come home fans. that day. Yeah, like, if you're not you know. rooting for Manchester, oi! Yeah. <laughs> we'll get the scarves and get everything. Get around from here. Yeah. You know around yeah. here. Oh, you you bunch of yikes, get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Drink that point. Yeah. I don't know. That's probably how they sound. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you ready? Ready. Yeah. Do you want to do it, or do you want me to do it? You ding got, dong, ding dong. That's all I got, man. That's it? That's all I got. That's Welcome to Christmas, Christmas spirit. episode. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. It is Christmas. It is that time of year. Spend some time with your loved ones and your not-so-loved ones that are at the same family gathering as you. Yes. That You're just like, man, I can't stand this person. Yeah. But... They're around because it is the holidays. And it's that's like Thanksgiving, how, but worse. It's like, yeah, because it lasts an entire month, not yeah. just one day. That's right. But, dude, I am a big Christmas. You know, Actually, no, I'm a big Halloween fan. Okay. But Christmas is tolerable to me. It's never been a big thing for me. Every every Christmas I've had, it's just been like, yeah, whatever. Really? Yeah, I'm not I've, a big Christmas fan. I've gotten more into Christmas just because I've grown in my faith. I'm like, oh, it's literally the celebration of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Nobody says Christmas anymore. I'm in. I'm I'm. I'm going to hard line. I'm a hard line Christmas guy now, you know, nice, I'm saying Christmas, you. Merry Christmas all the time. Merry not letting him. I'm not letting him, this war on Christmas must end. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> well, I just really like jumped in there. No, I love, I've actually, you know, before when you're a kid, obviously it's the presents it's and stuff, the presents, man. but now I really feel like I, I, I like participating. Like I'm, I'm, I'm the cool uncle to my nephews and nieces, so I like taking care of them for the Christmas yeah, time, you know. Uh, and yeah, I love. I, I used to not decorate. This is my little tree. This is a step up for me, folks. Okay, don't judge me. This is actually really impressive for what I used to do, which was literally nothing. Literally nothing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I actually decorated my place too. You did. And uh, usually I don't, cause like. Oh yeah, your place. I looks mean, good. even in the barracks, like some dudes would like go full out and get like mini trees and put it. I didn't do shit. Really. In the yeah. Do you have any fun to... Christmas stories from your time in the military? I got one in particular. I can no, tell I mean, you. Uh, every I never was deployed during Christmas. Oh, let me get my. Sorry. Keep, oh, going, yeah. keep going. I was never deployed during Christmas, uh, but every time, no, I did Christmas Exodus even, uh, even every year I was in the military. So I was home for every Christmas. I wasn't some bah humbug dude that uh, you know spent Christmas deployed because we deployed, we'd get home before Thanksgiving most of the time. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, that's a pretty big chunk. Yeah, no, no, so I mean, regiment does four month deployments. So we oh, would leave right. in like, what? I'd leave in November sometimes. Sometimes, I mean, at least for me, no, I didn't have to deploy during Christmas. One year they were deployed during Christmas and they did like a overseas Christmas things. And I got buddies that have done overseas, but I've never had to do the luxury of being deployed for Christmas. Uh, so I got to go home every year. So that's, that's cool. cool. And I was deployed to Iraq in 2008, so I was there for Christmas time. And I, I brought this cup out for those on the YouTube channel. Uh, this cup right here, this is straight from Iraq, from the, the BX in Iraq, actually. Mm. So we were in Mosul, Mason Mosul. And there was one dude, uh, and I'll forget his name, red haired dude. If you're, ever, if you're watching or listening, man, thank you for your Christmas spirit. But he was totally like uh, a homemaker guy. Like he was all about like traditions and family and like doing stuff and making a big deal out of the holidays. So when Christmas came, uh, he was like, everybody's got to get presents. We got to decorate. We got to do a tree. And everyone's like, in, in Iraq, on deployment, it's just another day. Yeah. You know? Cause, yeah. Uh, but uh, he went down to the BX, and he bought everybody on our on our base a present. It didn't matter what it was. Like, this is just a cup you could get from, you know, from being there. But he wrapped them, and he gave everybody got a present, man. Like, That's awesome. And he decorated. And then I remember he cooked. Like, he was a really good cook. Uh, and so, like... Cheers to the cheers to the lady that got that guy, you know. Uh, but um, 
uh, really cool. I always remember that was my that was my Christmas day. Uh, so now, and I still have this mug to this day. So it's like a nice little reminder of reminder, Christmas dude. spirit. Interact. That's cool, dude. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, tell me about what we're gonna do in today's episode. We know it's about Christmas. Yes. But what about Christmas? Well, you know, it's Christmas time here in the Pop Culture Field Manual podcast. As we celebrate the Christmas season and discuss all things Christmas, action, the military, and pop culture, we want to express our gratitude to all of you for listening and supporting yes. the show this past year and to wish you a very Merry Christmas. And also, I wanted to see how many times I could get the word Christmas into my intro, which I wrote myself this Christmas intro, podcast, Christmas, Christmas. <laughs> Intro podcast. Intro podcast Christmas. Perfect. Uh, but yeah, we're going to just talk about some some fun uh, Christmas-themed or Christmas some of our favorite Christmas movies. We'll talk a little bit about uh, what makes a Christmas movie, some of our favorite Christmas songs, Christmas traditions, and uh, hopefully all of you sitting in your cars right now uh, can can uh, travel along with us and tell us exactly. tell us later on. Send us an or email. Or riding in your sleigh. Wedding in your, or your sleigh. Your sleigh. Chris More Kringle. Christmas joke, Chris. That's right. Chris Naughty. All right, so let's get it. And Merry Christmas, Merry you Christmas. filthy animals. Okay. Well, I mean, that might as well just start off right there. Just we have to. I yeah. think we have to. Yes, let's start off with Home Alone. Yeah, why not? Dude, why not? Dude, man? Home Alone, a classic Christmas movie. Classic Christmas and movie. And it's like low-key Christmas movie, you know, because there's no like. I mean, in my opinion, at least, the movie for me is about, you know, a felony. It's <laughs> about like. Interesting, your mind a, goes right to the small, criminality. Yeah, like a small child has to defend his home his castle right. from invaders right and it's not about christmas it could have happened about july. manhood you yeah know? it's like it, it still could have happened in july could have happened in august could have happened in the middle of you know april it's a light-hearted straw dog yeah and it's really. you know people have to do this all the time they have to <laughs> yeah. defend their castles defend their from homes, invaders man. And it it's really so it's really a subtle subtle commentary on the second amendment you know oh yeah because <laughs> imagine if he just had a pistol be over done with <laughs> Like that one kid. Yeah, that's right. You know that one kid that uh, he, like, uh, shot the invader? He was home alone. He was, like, 12 years old, and he grabbed his dad's gun and shot the criminal. No way. I hadn't heard about that. It was awesome. And he's just like, yeah! (laughs) (laughs) I did it. Honestly, the kid might be, uh, he he needs a little bit of counseling to make sure he's not a serial killer. Did they have, like, him on the phone or something? Like, where you hear, like, his voice? Yeah, the kid, they interview the kid, and you're just like, yikes. Uh, like he did this a little too easily. <laughs> <laughs> he was waiting for his yeah, moment. He was waiting for Listen, moment. it's not about not being aggressive; it's about channeling that aggression. All right. <laughs> but the thing about Home Alone, how do you forget? If you're a father or a mother, oh man, how yeah. do you forget? Well, they do a good job of setting that premise up. Yeah, you know, a lot of kids. Yeah, they they put them in an out of the way area. It's a lot of conflict in the family, so they put them up there. And then it's a lot, everybody's there for Christmas, so it's a, it's a big jumble. It's a big rush. They're late. And so they do a good job of kind of building up that conceit, you know, of, mm-hmm. of they just they just forgot him, you know. They just forgot. Yeah, they think, oh, I think he's over there. I think he's in the other van, you know, and they're rushing yeah. and stuff. And so uh, – and then she remembers pretty quickly in, in mom's defense, which, by the way, that – I have to look her up, but uh, that actress's name, uh, she did such a good Catherine job. Catherine O'Hara. Catherine O'Hara, man. She – She's so good. She, I, you watch that, and then you watch like a movie like Beetlejuice. Uh, she's in Beetlejuice too, she, right? Oh, she's in Beetlejuice. Yeah, she's in Beetlejuice she's, as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Beetlejuice two hasn't come out yet, <laughs> as of the recording of this as podcast. Well. Oh, fuck <laughs> off, dude. T T O O. Whatever. Whatever. Uh, she's man. so great. She plays a great mom. She's got great energy. But um, yeah, man, and that, and I love it because he's enough of a kid that like he thinks he made his family disappear. Yeah. You know, like so they got that kid logic, and I love in the second one he's, he's like, like, "I'm a man." Now. Yeah, yeah. He's doing the aftershave, and he's just like, "Yeah, all ah! oh, that that iconic imagery, yeah. man." Like that's like I'm sure that follows Macaulay Culkin to this day. You know, Macaulay and Culkin looks it. like he's never aged a day. Yeah, he like, just looks still, like a wrinkly twelve year old. Yeah, literally. Yeah. And Did you see very, him on Red Letter Media? Like, he was, like, a guest star? On one no, of I saw him on American Horror Story, the newest season. Oh, he's in the newest season? Yeah, oh, wow. he plays, like, a crackhead, and he does a very good job. I already had kind of a, I already kind of, kind of a rough childhood. Like, yeah. you know, the I mean, child actor child curse. Actor, yeah. His parents maybe stole his money. I don't know, I mean, man. not all, because you look at Hillary Duff, and she's just, like, a, a gem that made it out of the rough. I, did she? Yeah, she's No normal. problems? Completely okay. normal. Oh, wow. Good for like, her. She has a beautiful family. Good hey, job, great. Oh, you know. good. Good. The, yeah, she's doing great. She's the outlier. Yeah, literally. Man. Everybody else is Macaulay Culkin. Yeah. <laughs> Macaulay Culkin married uh, Brenda Song, right? Who's that? From, uh, yeah, okay, now, yeah. What? What's Amy laughing? Who's what are you laughing for, She's Amy? from, uh, she plays Paris, or Paris Tipton, Miss Tipton, 
from uh, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. She's a Disney star. I'll have to take your word for it. Yeah, she's okay. she's Asian. Lady. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, great. Good, Disney, good for him. Childhood Disney star. Good for him. A super weird couple, though. Like, uh, oh, really? So weird <laughs> well, that's like, uh, talking about Ted Lasso, you know, it's going to be all over because I just got into it, folks. I'm sorry for these episodes where I'm talking about Ted Lasso all, all the time. But um, See, when I told you, I was I was talking about Ted Lasso, and you're yeah. like, why are you keep talking about Ted I know, Lasso. dude. Now I, now I know why. Show. It's such a good show. Uh, not Christmas themed, but Jason Sudeikis married to what, Olivia Wilde or something like that. Is she? Is yeah. He? Yeah. 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 I just but think anyway. that's, I, I mean, I don't have no idea who they are as people. Maybe they're the perfect couple, but yeah, I, don't I, don't know. Know. I don't know. Aesthetically. It's Aesthetically. Weird. Yes, that's right. It's weird. So Home Alone, huh? So Home Alone. Home Alone. Home Alone yes. Home Alone. Uh, what do you think about Home Alone? Dude, I, I mean, it, it's a, it's an iconic Christmas movie, man. Yeah. I, uh, I, um, what I love about, you know, this movie and any, any movie that's, you can see, like, there's certain things that I look for when I watch a movie. Like, you know, like, is there a character arc? Is there, like, uh, you know, like, a journey that they go on and stuff? Or, uh, you know, are the characters, like, really well-defined? Is the conflict really well-defined? So, like, and that, that movie totally is that, you know? Like, he has this lesson he has to learn. And I guess that might be something to do with, like, what makes a good Christmas movie. Is, like, mm-hmm. is there some kind of, like, lesson that the character has? Well, in any story, really. Is there some lesson that the character has to learn? about you know he he just doesn't appreciate his family because you know uh yeah. he thinks he you know he thinks he's the outlier he's the out, yeah, yeah but then then he realizes like all he really wants for christmas is his, is family. his family back yeah uh, and that's yeah. and in the midst of all the ridiculousness and the weird wild traps and, and antics and stuff those criminals should have died on numerous multiple occasions. like when the the gallon of paint yep. smacking them ahead, that the definitely would have leveled some dude that would have crushed your face oh yeah all, any one of these pranks or traps would have killed them or severely injured them. Yeah. And that would have been it. Life altering injuries. Yeah, the movie would have been forty five minutes long. Yeah. And it would have ended after the first trap, you know. Yeah, I know. Even but slipping on the ice or slipping something. Slipping on the like ice that. and busting your head open, yeah, that you could die that way. And they got the blowtorch. Yeah, thing. To the head. It's very special forces actually, now very that we're talking about it. Yeah. It's a very yeah, he's very much a maybe Macaulay Culkin was special forces. Yeah, maybe Kevin t- grew up to be a Green Beret. Yeah, you know? Maybe. Um, but anyways, moving on here. Honestly, this was kind of hard not to talk about first, but uh-huh. it needs to get established. Yes, Die, Die Hard, Hard is, is, a is a Christmas movie. movie. Yes, it is. Die a Hard Christmas is a Christmas movie. movie. And why uh, is it a Christmas movie? Why is it Christmas? Because it's about a man who just wants to go home for the holidays to be with his wife and kids, and Alan Rickman gets in the way. Yeah. So really, it's kind of a Harry Potter movie. Actually, I've heard that it's kind of a Harry Potter movie it's as well because he spends all well, the entire is- movie. In a tower, running yeah. from Alan Rickman. Well, I mean, what is a Christmas movie? What is a Christmas movie? What That's, makes a Christmas movie? What makes a Christmas movie? It's just like exactly. what makes something breakfast? Is it the presence of an egg? Yeah. Is it the time in which you in is which it you watch it? Because you can do you breakfast for dinner. Yeah, exactly. You do Brinner. You know, maybe Die Hard is the Brinner of Christmas movies. You know, because what is breakfast to you? I think it includes the presence of an egg. No, no, not not not. Well, okay, you're right. Eggs are pretty iconic for for breakfast. You know. I like, I, sorry, just saying the presence of an egg. It's like you're just sitting there eating like lunch. It's just a sandwich and chips. And there's just. And then you look over and there's an egg watching you. And he's like, I'm here. This is breakfast. <laughs> like, welcome, welcome to breakfast. <laughs> I'm, it's a giant egg like the old commercials, yeah. the incredible edible egg. I was like, uh, what makes a Christmas movie? Yeah, what makes a Christmas movie? Is okay. it just uh, December? Is it just Christmas right. time? No, because there are a lot of movies, and I think that's the big uh, con against Die Hard being a Christmas movie. It's like, yeah, it happens to play, take place at Christmas time, but what are what makes a Christmas movie, and does it satisfy those things? You know, like mm-hmm. it has all the Christmas tropes, like you know, freaking uh, Shane Black. You know, if you watch his movies, uh, you know, Lethal Weapon, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, Iron Man Three, all Christmas stuff in there, just because he loves Christmas. he loves Christmas. You know. Um, but are they Christmas movies necessarily? So, like Die Hard, you know, uh, if you wanted to make the case, you know, I mean, I mean, there's a ton of Christmas music. Uh, there's, uh, there is, obvi- there is a theme of a, of John McClane reconciling with his wife, you know, and wanting to be home for the holidays, you know, and stuff like that. Um, he does wrap presents. Uh, there are wrap presents. Yeah, because so this at the is very from end. Google itself. Oh no! I said I googled what makes a Christmas. Movie. What makes a Christmas? Movie? And you know, Google their motto is to pretty much provide and create a standard for everything and for all the world. The knowledge. meta of life. Yeah. Yes. So pretty much, according to them, and according to real to real to real movies dot com, a film must feature 
one of the traditional Christmas themes, such as love, hope, generosity, faith, redemption, family, or fear. And I think Die oh, Hard. I think all, really, almost all of those are in almost Die Hard. All of those are featured in like Die fear, Hard. like when he drops the body on on the cop. Yeah. It's like hope, welcome to the potty, I, pal. Yeah, That's hope, fear right there. All the people hope. are experiencing fear and hope. It, generosity. Yeah, it, it, uh, his wife has faith yeah. in him that sh that he's going to save the day. Yeah, redemption. And redemption. I'm sure he messes up at one point. Well, he well the, the their marriage is on the ropes. Is That's the thing. The she doesn't even use his last name. She goes by Gennaro, which actually kind of ends up helping her or saves her for a little bit because in the beginning they're looking for John McClain mm. and they don't see any McClains on the on the roster for his wife because she goes she's got going by his name, you know, because they're they're kind of estranged because he's still in New York. And she's in L.A. That's why he comes out to try to reconcile. Yeah. So reconciliation is there. Redemption. He wants to redeem Re himself. Redemption. Redeem yeah. his negativity. Absolutely. See, so Die Hard is completely, completely a, Christmas a Christmas movie. And it movie. takes place during Christmas time. Yeah, absolutely. And isn't you know? the office party a Christmas it's office It's a Christmas party? party, yeah. It's, it's a, a Christmas Yeah, it's a Christmas party. party. Yeah. That Plus there's is, Christmas music all throughout. There's yeah. all throughout. The yeah. Ho, ho, ho. I've got a machine I've gun. Got a machine. He wraps the machine gun to his back at the very end with, with, with tape. wrapping tape. Yeah. yeah. With Christmas wrap. Also, yeah. I could be wrong, but I believe that there is the presence of an egg. Is there? No, I don't know. I don't and even know what that means. So, does that mean Die Hard is a breakfast movie? movie? It's also breakfast a breakfast movie. movie. It's a breakfast movie. <laughs> I mean, come on, go back to the the egg thing. What breakfast? <laughs> like you can you can have a steak for breakfast, but you have steak and eggs. Steak and eggs, yeah. But the second you just remove the egg, it's just lunch or dinner. What if you didn't? What if you just had pancakes for dinner? There's eggs and That's, pancakes. There's eggs and pancakes. But what but if you pancakes, just had like fruit for breakfast? Fruit for breakfast. Fruit for breakfast. There's no eggs there. That's just fruit. But for fruit That's what isn't you're an iconic Christmas. You're not saying Christmas I'm eating that breakfast fruit. Breakfast You're saying item. I'm having fruit for breakfast. Just like I'm... Mm. <laughs> Presence of an egg. Cameron, Presence just to be clear. I agree with you. I think breakfast should always feature an egg. Yeah. It's the perfect food. But I think there are some breakfast dishes like oatmeal. Oatmeal. What is it, like grits? Is grits a Christmas uh, grits. Or a Chris, Christmas grits meal? Is breakfast. Is a grits a, a pre grits breakfast Christmas omelet. meal? I'm getting the two There's mixed no up now. But usually food. you have grits with eggs. Grits with eggs. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because so grits the, is like is, not a main so dish. So grits is a Christmas meal. I don't or think it's a main Christmas dish. Not Christmas breakfast. I'm sorry. I, I just can't. Now I don't know. Now I don't know what is, what is real Your anymore. Your intro had Christmas so many times that now you feel like you have to include Christmas every single time you're saying something yeah. Christmas. Yeah. Batman Returns Christmas. is oh Christmas. Batman is absolute Batman Returns is absolutely a Christmas movie. Let's talk oh, about 100%. that because I love that movie. That's a great one. That's the one with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jim Carrey. No, no, no. That's 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 neither of those two are in the same movie that's anyway. Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin Batman. has ha, Batman and Robin has Mr. Freeze, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Batman Forever with Val Kilmer has Jim Carrey. But they're not those two. Oh, this are not one the was same. Penguin and the okay, okay Penguin and Catwoman. The iconic, the best Catwoman ever. I think we can all agree, Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman is the best Catwoman. Yeah. Who plays? Amy says yes as well. Doesn't Danny DeVito play the? Danny penguin? DeVito plays the Penguin. Yeah. Yes. It starts off with his parents, it putting him in a basket and throwing it into the river, the river to get river. Yeah, because yeah. he's an evil animal child. He's an e his yeah, dad he's is flippers. Paul Rubens. His dad is Paul Rubens. Pee Wee, he, Herman. Pee -wee Herman. Yeah. Pee Wee Herman. Yeah. He's Oswald a, Copperpot. Oswald Copperpot is Oswald is is, is his the penguin's name. Yes, but I forget his father's name. But, but yeah, he's Oswald plays Copperpot. A good penguin. He yeah. plays a great penguin. The Tim Burton Batman movies um, were like very like it's like the gothic kind of like almost like dark child childhood stories, you know, like kind it. of thing, twisted tales and stuff. Um, you know, whereas the Christian Bale kind of tried to ground it in reality and stuff, yeah. in real gritty reality. But I think Batman they, Returns they been totally well. Christmas. They yeah. mesh well. Yeah, totally Christmas. Because it takes place during Christmas. Around Christmas think. time, yep. Uh, mm -hmm. You definitely have, I mean, Catwoman, her journey is uh, very sad. It always brings a tear to my eye when, because when, she's like, gets beat down, you know, and she has this really negative response. She becomes Catwoman. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, she, well, I guess she doesn't really have, she has an arc in that she doesn't, you know, uh, she she doesn't like kill Batman because <laughs> no. she's in love. She kind of she's torn between, you know, the, her relationship with Bruce Wayne and then also being Catwoman, and then she ends up electrocuting herself and uh, uh, Christopher Walken. Max Shrek. Max Shrek. But doesn't he have? She have nine lives. She does have nine lives. She says, "I'll save one for next year." But until then, how about a kiss, Santa Claus? And she does the she does the. Uh, the taser right in her mouth and kisses uh and then she holds on to the like the giant power cable and it like explodes and 
you know, nice. Max Shrek gets killed, but then at the very end, spoilers, you can see her shadow. I thought they were going to do a third one, but I, I think there were things that happened that prevented that ultimately from happening. But my favorite line of the movie at the very end, after he sees Catwoman, he see and and Bruce Wayne's there, Michael Keaton, he picks up the black cat and he gets back in the his limousine with Alfred. And, you know, he said, Alfred says, you know, Merry Christmas, Mr. Wayne. He says, Merry Christmas and goodwill on earth uh, uh, or uh, goodwill toward men, he says. But then he looks up and he's like, and women, you know. So it's a very equal, very equality-based uh, movie is. as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, Batman Returns also, that's one that I, that's another one I've watched multiple times. I, I got on this kick, like I hadn't watched it for a long time. You ever, has this ever happened to you? Like we, old movie, maybe you've seen it, maybe it's, uh, you know, doesn't, tickle your fancy like it used to but then you watch it and you're like you kind of get obsessed with that like re-obsessed with it that was Batman Returns for me you know mm. I watched that and then I watched it again like two or three more times after that and I don't know why I just I think I really I think Catwoman's story actually really touched me like I think in, I'm in my old age I'm getting more sentimental I just feel really bad for her because she's like she talks about like she's just been dumped on by all these dudes she's pushed out a window she's been shot she's been dumped yeah, you know she got she got really she she gets dropped like three times in the movie she gets pushed out the window she gets uh you know pushed off a building by batman and then penguin tries to hang her and she cuts the line she drops in and she's like <laughs> the last one i think she drops into like a, a greenhouse and then she screams and it breaks all the glass with it her intro is awesome, dude. Remember her intro where she does all the stuff in the department store, the sporting goods store? She gets her whip. Mm -hmm. And then Batman and Penguin are standing there, and she flips towards them, and she goes, and she goes, meow. And then the whole building just explodes behind her. <laughs> oh, so good. What a great intro, man. We'd have to do a show about the best intros. Best intros? Yeah. That's best a great. Best character intros? Character That's intros. Good, yeah. You're on them. Dude, speaking of like a movie with like an awesome female character, you guys had me watch that Long Kiss Goodnight movie. Yes, 1996, 1996. Gina Davis, action movie, Sam Jackson. Yeah, Sam Jackson, I had no idea. Yeah. And honestly, that you could not remake that movie. The themes in that movie, or there's the moti some hardcore themes. Yeah? In there. I was dying because I was like, it was one of those movies that I was like, you can't recreate this. Like, some, like what? Tell me, like, because oh I've it's seen just it, some it's of just the been things, a long time. It's just some of the things they say in today's, uh, okay. today's generation would get super offended. That would be a lot of things, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> that's because I was watching it, and I even texted you guys. I was like, this movie is out of control. <laughs> uh, but just the <laughs> shit that happens, I mean. what's the, Give us the basic premise for those okay, that may not so, have seen it. So, uh, Long Kiss Goodnight is pretty much a mid-American housewife. Um, she's something with amnesia or like she's, she's brainwashed amnesia. or something. And she gets in a car accident when, she run, when she's on the way back from a Christmas party because it's Christmas time. Yep. And uh, she starts remembering little like snippets of her past life. And it turns out she used to be a government assassin. And uh, oh, so basically, yeah, so basically she like bumps her head and like she keeps getting like flashbacks to like her old self and she starts rediscovering things around her house and she's like, wait, that's not my name. But then realizes like that was her old name and oh. like it's not just some random book that she found at the thrift store. It's uh, actually a book given to her oh. by like her old past things. And uh, yeah, she just like Sam Jackson, some like private investigator, like con man. Yeah. That ends up tracking her down, and there's this one like government agency that's like trying to find her. Like they're trying to silence her. Yeah, they're right? trying to silence her because like it's funny. There's she's just like this some mid American housewife just living life, and there's this dude sitting in prison, and he's like watching TV, and he's watching the Christmas parade, and she's like in one of the floats, and he's like, no, <laughs> and he like ends up getting out of jail and like going to her house and trying to <laughs> kill her and everything. Uh, but it's just the action and is crazy and it's just a bunch of betrayal and like espionage and whatnot. But it takes place during Christmas, so it definitely is a Christmas, is that Christmas movie. I love at the end the one the one of the iconic scenes is like Sam Jackson gets shot like four times and he's all bloody. But then you he's in the he's inside a car inside a moving van or something like that and he gets up and it's like the da -na 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 -na, you know. Yeah. Uh, and he busts out of there. Uh, he's like, you he can't sings, kill me! Yeah. He sings that yeah. song. He's like, I just sing everything that I'm doing, putting on my shirt. <laughs> He's a bit of a, he plays kind of he's a bit of a like a socially awkward dork. Oh yeah, no, he's like a sleaze ball. Yeah, he doesn't know how to ball. really talk to people. He gets like a book deal at the end. How does that movie end? I can't. I can't. I, it's it's been a long time. I just know it ends in a huge. How sentence. does it end, Chris? Because I didn't make it to the ending. What? Yeah. You what? liar! I made you it about poser. three fourths. I made it about three fourths through. Son of a. She has a daughter. Like she wakes up. Her amnesia. She wakes up pregnant, and she was like shot in the head. Oh. 
Um, and so she has the daughter, but it turns out she had the daughter with the guy that had her killed. Oh, the guy okay. that's in jail that comes to kill her, he was supposed to kill her, and she like blinded him in one eye, and that's why he's yeah, angry. he's got like the wonky eye. Okay. But uh, so that guy, the the big bad guy, takes her daughter from her, and she gets her back. But oh. she has to like she says to Samuel Jackson, she's like, I don't care if he has her, I don't care about her. But that's not actually true. Right, right. And so she like there's a big shootout at the end, and she gets her daughter back, and then she goes back to her mid-american housewife life mm. nice nice after what killing is, everybody what does the husband do i forget what happens it's is he just like does he just knock him out and put him in a closet somewhere or something he's just off somewhere i don't know <laughs> like her actual husband <laughs> yeah or? like her her middle american oh, house, yeah, no, house she, husband she leaves the house and she's just like have fun watching the kids oh and then she goes and, and has then she her goes adventure. to samuel well so jackson. she is the one that hired samuel L. jackson to find out about her past and then he <laughs> comes to her and says hey i found all this stuff so then she starts like dredging up all this all the cia assassin stuff mm. and she, that's she goes off with samuel L. jackson to do that and the dad's just back at home and then okay. the daughter just gets kidnapped for like a night okay. so ah. so he's, he's you know, pretty yeah he's pretty he probably that, thought she was asleep that's a crazy bed. movie it's a good recommendation i'm yeah. glad you guys gave it to me i'm glad Although i gotta I go and rewatch that it. it's all right we'll you watch, I'll watch lack it commitment i like sir. commitment sorry so it it, it it does have a pop culture connection, but I, I kind of just want to talk about the event because it's it's super touching and kind of one of those. It's I mean, a the, tearjerker. The, it's a tearjerker. Yeah, it's a, so it's the Christmas miracle of 1914. It was the mm. very beginning of World War One, and maybe you've heard about it. It was kind of when the night the night before Christmas, uh, out on the front lines, the British and German soldiers kind of came together for a, a little bit. You know, on, I think maybe Christmas Day or something like that. Like they heard. Each side heard the other, like maybe singing songs, and then on Christmas Day they kind of came up and said, "Hey, let's like hang out," and then like slowly but surely, they <laughs> afterwards that you know, uh, I, I I did a little bit of research. Uh, so like the Sainsbury, the Sainsbury chocolate commercial from like 2014. You just do a Google search of Sainsbury com- like Christmas miracle commercial or whatever. It's so touching, man. They did such a good job, and it's like a chocolate bar commercial. <laughs> really? But uh, they have uh, it's featured in uh, one of the Doctor Who specials, Twice Upon a Christmas, uh, and then there's a there's actually a movie, 2005 movie called Joyeux Noël. It's Merry Christmas, it, uh, where it's about that, and it looks a little Hollywoodized, like they pump it up, you know, to make this this huge thing. But I did a little bit of research. It's not necessarily it didn't necessarily happen like all across the front lines. Yeah, no, just in specific uh, spots. Yeah, specific certain spots. Um, uh, it, and it and it it was in the beginning of the war, so people think that it, it might have been like they might be more, like, conducive, like the conditions, because you know th- people didn't know that this war was going to go on for as long mm-hmm. as it did. When they, at first they thought it was going to be over by Christmas, you know, so maybe at the time, you know, like yeah, we're at war, but it, there was like this idea of like, oh, it's not that bad, you know. But then afterwards, you know, you get the get the propaganda out there. You start it goes on and on. And it becomes more brutal. It's like, well, f those Germans, f those English, you know. And they're just like, uh, we're just dudes fighting a war. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. yeah. Like, I guess we're fighting this war. But uh, so yeah, it didn't it didn't happen again, and it, it wasn't as widespread. But the idea that it did happen in the middle it's of the war, it's the, that idea. Yeah, it's a precious, beautiful, like mm. human kind of idea. And which uh, is very interesting, man, because in Germany, so in my family, they actually celebrate Christmas on the sixth. Really? Of December. Really? Yeah. And Why is that? There is no actual like Christmas Day. Well, it's you're right. Like, it's not like Jesus was born no, 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 on no, no, December no. 24th. Yeah, it's uh it's 25th. I'm pretty sure it's on the 6th at least in my family and you know, if you're of German descent and you want to explain this a little better than oh. I'm going to go, go ahead and send us a message. But right. typically it would be like there is no like Christmas Day where Santa Claus comes. In Germany it's like Santa Claus is like this like nature boy. And oh, he, uh, he'll okay. come on the 6th, and it's called, like, Klaus Day or something like that. Nice. And uh, it's basically the day where Santa Claus comes and just gives you nuts and berries. So my dad <laughs> used to, like, we used to have two Christmases because on the 6th we would get, like, little knickknacks and shit. And then on the 25th we do the Americanized, like, uh. Uh, Christmas Day and stuff. Um, but it's very surprising that the Germans were like, oh, you know, we accept your beliefs. Yeah, they good. Yeah, say good. Uh, uh, okay. people, people do it on a different day. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Uh, well, you know, I mean, I think that there's an actual, there was an actual person, like a Saint Nicholas, yeah, Saint that Nicholas. used to give presents. Nicholas. Give, yeah, Nicholas. Uh, and so it's all just kind of amalgamated. I don't even know where we get the trees from. Like, this isn't a Christian thing. Like, yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. It's very intertwined. Yeah, it's a bunch of stuff kind of conglomerated together. Uh, but, um, yeah, man, Christmas Miracle, 1914. 
common common humanity, shared common humanity, you know right. that kind of stuff. Uh, what else you got, man? We can talk about that. I, I, I well, actually let me just say this. Actually, the Call of Duty snowball fight mode. Mo- what mod, is that? It's basically just it's basically just a different mod uh, that basically you're throwing snowballs at each other. It's like a bunch of piles of snowballs you gather. Oh, really? And you're throwing snowballs and then you kill people that way. So I thought that was like nice Christmas Christmassy That's- type. Christmas Eve time. Tradition, you know. Well, if anybody knows me and they know, like, how fucking metal I am. Dude, there's some, you know, horror movies that are Christmas-themed Dude, and everything. Yeah. Like, uh, Krampus. Krampus? Krampus? Yeah, the, yeah, Krampus. Um, yeah, the opposite of Santa, Santa Claus. He's the one who comes of, for the naughty people. Yeah, he comes for the naughty and, you know, beats the <laughs> shit out of them, apparently, and takes the children who have misbehaved. Yeah. And uh, there was that Christmas movie. I thought that was super cool. Um just how there's always you know it's really mainline streamed as like this very joyous holiday but you know if you look into the lore of christmas there's some <laughs> fucked up <laughs> shit yeah, that yeah. happens yeah that usually that's usually how it is with like holidays you, yeah you it's something gets put in there and it gets like like a lot of like grim fairy tales or aesop's yeah. fables and stuff we the kid versions and then there's like no the you know the actual version's a lot darker than that yeah, you know it's, it's they just uh, dim it. PG'd what are some up. of your favorite? Do you, speaking of like the darker stuff, what are some of your favorite like dark Christmas movies? Oh man, I mean you have Krampus classics. is the top one. Yeah, Krampus know? is pretty good. I mean, but on the lighter side of things, that I just explores the Halloween theme. You have to go with Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh yeah, yeah Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, Jack of Skellington course, Man with the Tim Burton film. Um, That's I, I feel um, like Tim Burton's a big Christmas fan too. Because I, I mean, mean, you have like the Batman's, just like Batman Returns, yeah, you know, and then you yeah, got this that. one. Yep. And, uh, but that one's so good as far as, like, I just rewatched it the other day. And the yeah. cool thing about that is you can watch it in Halloween time or you can watch it in Christmas it's time. It's a Halloween movie it's and a Christmas uni- yeah, movie. Yeah, it's so universal. And it's so good, too. Hey, did that win any Academy Awards for, like, songs or anything like that or any awards for, like, Danny Elfman's, like, lyrics mm-hmm. or singing or anything? I don't know. Because Danny Elfman does, is the singing voice. Both the, vo- the singing voice and the uh, the speaking voice of... Jack Skellington are like iconic. Danny Elfman's the singing voice, and then uh, uh, let's see, uh, what's the I got the other guy was the, the other guy was a, the vampire dude in the first uh, Fright Night. Uh, Fright Night. What are you talking about? Oh man? come on, Christopher Sarandon. Christopher Sarandon. Yeah, yeah. He's the he's the speaking voice of uh, of. Um, I should do. I should do the look at this before we actually start recording. But the, I know, right? Uh, but yeah, uh, super iconic. I mean, other you know, yeah, kind of like Chris Sarandon, yeah, villainous Christmas movies. Which I mean, you like the classics, The Grinch. Like that's such yeah, a, The I, Grinch. The Grinch is a great. I love the Jim Carrey remake. I never saw the Jim Carrey one. You have it freaked me out a little bit. Really? It's so that, good. The Who's and the Grinch belong yeah, in who, animation world, not the real no, world. It's, that's a good one, man. That, <laughs> I would watch that. The Grinch is so good, and Jim Carrey does an amazing. Yeah. I think he portrays it so good. Um, I mean, if anybody could, it would be the human cartoon that yeah, is Jim literally Carrey, Jim Carrey. You know? It is good. Uh, there's so many memes that came out of uh, came out of the Grinch too. It's like, don't mess with my dog, and like, it's like telling people at the Christmas party, don't rile up the dog, and it's just. Like, <laughs> 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 It's such a good it. one. That one's great, and I mean, anybody that just hates Christmas that much, it just ruin, wants to ruin it for everybody. Yep. Good for you. Does his heart grow three sizes bigger in the in the live action movie? It does. Oh, okay, cool. Because yeah. no, that's it's the, a it's a good movie. It's such a good movie. It's one of my I watch it every year. The the original Grinch who stole Christmas the animation, yeah, the animation that would be something that I would watch every year because the song is great. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. That's in the uh, everything really? in the cartoon is in the normal is in the real life. Version. It's interesting. All it's right. a good one. Check it out, dude. It's All super right. awesome. I'll give it a shot. I'll give it, it is a shot. great. But yeah, what about you? What, what, any, well, I I, last minute one? I have seen way more Christmas horror movies than I than I care to admit. Unfortunately, because I have friends that are into them, but like there's like Black Christmas. Yeah, you know the original Black Christmas. I know they remade it, but like uh, just like real creepy. It, uh, yeah, there's like women, like sorority girls, and there's a, there's a killer in the house somewhere. Of and then at the end, they get taken away, and you find out the killer is still in the house. You know, oh, no. and uh, and then there's uh. uh Oh man, what's the one with the dude? His arms hanging out of the chimney. He's like a killer. He's like a psycho killer that escaped from a mental institute, and then he abs- he happens to put on a, a Santa outfit. Oh and yeah, he's that like one naughty, is... and he like kills. It's like, it's like oh, 
uh, what is it? Uh, night. It's not the Nightmare Before Christmas. It's, uh, no, it's anyway. not. I know which one you're talking about. He like finds the suit and he's escaping. Yeah, from Jack. It. It's like slaying claw nickel. I don't know. <laughs> Nickelback. Um, Nickelback. What? No. no, that's just um, an awesome rock band. But uh, yeah, there, there's just I, I actually don't I don't like like Christmas horror movies and stuff because like I get that like I get like something like Nightmare Before Christmas maybe but. Uh, where it's playing with a theme, but like to totally twist it into like this dark murder time, you know, uh, I don't know. I, 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 some things are still sacred to me. Some of course, of course, here I am talking about Die Hard and Long Kiss Goodnight, and be know, like right. that. They're Christmas movies, I'm not correct. but they have like they're 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 more on the positive side. Like they do have good themes and like they're good good stories to tell at the heart of who they are because they're just well told films, you know, well told stories. But things like Black Christmas and you know. Uh, si- oh, Silent Night, Deadly Night, Silent Night, Deadly Night. That was that the one I was trying to think of. But, um, but uh, do you have any? Uh, let me- Dude, I mean, thinking like, I mean, we're on the topic of Christmas horror movies, yep. and there are so many of it. But switching to like military, uh, military Christmas movies specifically about like. Hold on one second, Cameron. Can you move your mic a little closer to your face? Is it kind of? It's just off to the side. You got to keep it in front of you. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, I mean, speaking on the topic of, you know, we're on horror Christmas movie, but switching over to, like, Christmas movies about the military, you know? Yeah, yeah. There are none. There are <laughs> none. Unless you're, like, into Hallmark, which is the worst Which is the worst. Ever. Yeah, I'm looking at some of them like, no, yeah, I'm never going to watch any like, of these movies. like, an actual Christmas movie that, you know, incorporated the military, like, a straight-up Christmas movie. There's nothing except for, you know, Hallmark Channel. I was thoroughly Ugh. disappointed because I'm not going to sit here and watch Hallmark, Hallmark movies about a dude who's in the wrong uniform because they're too cheap to hire a nice military advisor. If there's one thing that they don't care about in Hallmark movies, it's military accuracy. I mean, I, oh, I'm yeah, just no. guessing. I'm totally guessing because I've never watched a Hallmark movie, nor will I ever watch a Hallmark movie. Uh, but, uh, no, I think you're right. I think yeah, there's like darker good. ones like um, there's like that the Christmas whole... scene in Jarhead. There is a Christmas a scene, Christmas in, scene Jarhead. in Jarhead. Yeah, yeah, but I don't that... think we would consider that a Chris a Jarhead a Christmas movie. Absolutely yeah. not. Absolutely, yeah. Not. yeah. yeah. I, I barely know. consider it a movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we are still in. I like the Jarhead. I didn't like. I didn't like Jarhead all that much. I mean, it was a good drama, you know. Uh, I suppose, but um, well, hey, it's his, it's his experience, you know. Experience. I I feel like that that's that's I have. I don't have a I don't have a problem I don't have a problem let me just say this I don't have a problem with movies that take place in the military that are like negative or that like tell like dark stories and stuff like that I am not a fan of how often they come out and how much they are put forward as like you know this is what the military is really like I'm like I get it you had that experience I would not say that the majority of military is like that but uh, anyway jarhead to um, each their own yeah yeah. But you got any other ones, man? Let's hear them. Let's hear them. Uh, you know, man, I mean, honestly, um, I don't know. I, we got the big ones out of the way, Die Hard and stuff like Let me ask you this. Okay, let's do let's do a couple of trivia, yeah. a couple of things for for you. Uh, what are some of your favorite Christmas songs? Tell me, Christmas give me, yeah, songs. top Christmas songs. Some Christmas songs, man. I am a Ebenezer Scrooge when it comes to singing at Christmas you time. You not? Well, I mean, no, to listen to as well. Like, okay. you know, Mariah I mean, Carey is all I want for Christmas, you know, or whatever. Oh, yeah, big time. Yeah. That, I mean, that one's a, that one's a, a classic. Uh, yeah, it? that is a classic. It is now. It is, yeah. yeah. Do you know, you know she makes like over like in, do you know how much money she makes in royalties every year? Just she this? better. Oh, yeah, so much. She makes, like, <laughs> I hear that song all the time. Once, once November 1st starts rolling around, mm-hmm. <laughs> it starts creeping in all the department stores and stuff. I don't think, honestly, dude, I like when I don't have a per, per se favorite Christmas song in mm-hmm. general. Like if I go and I'm like, I'm going to put a song on, like I get the Spotify and everyone's like, here's the aux cord. Sure. And I wouldn't, I just put on Christmas radio shuffle. Sure. Because right. they're all, they're all good. But you I don't like- have one like that's like crazy. I, I like the classic ones, you know, like the, the kind of Bing, Bing Crosby, White Christmas, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen the movie, but like uh, there, I, I would say if I had to choose one era or the other, the classic era, I am more a fan of than the kind of the modern era. Yeah. There's a couple I like, the Mariah Carey one. Was it the, uh, w- the, 
Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays by the Backstreet Boys. Or, yeah, Backstreet Boys. I like that one. Uh, and everything's okay. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. That one. I like that one. But uh, there are fewer and fewer Christmas, modern Christmas songs. I like the classic yeah, no, ones. The, are just the, mo- the standard ones. Well, yeah. You know? The standard ones are just, I'll you be know, all the modern Christmas music. Uh, all the modern Christmas music is literally just a remix of the standard classic ones. Yeah, there aren't yeah. too many original modern songs that really capture the spirit. Yeah, but it's a lot of bands covering classic. Yeah, just songs covering classics stuff like that. Yeah, because that Jingle Bell Rock, man. Jingle yeah, Jingle Bell Rock. That's Jingle Bell one. Rock. Yeah, man. Little Drummer Boy. Come, they told me. That one's boring as shit. Hey, it's touching. It's touching. All right. I think it's dumb. I mean, what's the do you have any Christmas family traditions that you do? Every Christmas year? family traditions. You know, mm-hmm. my uh, unfortunately, this is the one of the backdrops uh, or the drawbacks of uh, coming from a broken home. <laughs> like my parents got divorced when I was six Damn. years old. So I mean, uh, sometimes multiple Christmases. Take it easy. So yeah, I'm bringing the whole show down right now. Sometimes multiple Christmases because families, di- different families, you know, you, yeah. you kind of have. Like in the morning you'll do one, or the night before you'll do one. Then you'll you'll switch locations and you'll do the next one. Of course, that just meant that they would split whatever presents we did have, so I would get less presents at each location. But um, I've kind of gotten into a tradition in the past three, four years. Uh, I think this will be like my third or fourth year doing it. My tradition is going to going to Colorado to my brother's place. Interesting. Uh, and and hanging out with him and just not not doing any work and just eating whatever I wanted. That's a tradition during Christmas. Eat whatever you want. want. January 1st comes around. We get back into the workout, but when the Christmas time, you know, we have a Christmas party. Uh, I had a Christmas party with Amy. Uh, yeah, no, right. I was here. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you yeah, were I here. you invited me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I make hot cider, make the hot spice cider. That was we good. Had, we had a ton of stuff. We had the hot chocolate, the spice cider. Did you make that shawarma? Who made that shawarma? Uh, Amy made it. It yeah. was good. Yeah, it was from a food yeah. run, yeah. Oh, yeah. that was really good. So it's free, Hell too. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, not really. Yeah, I, I'm... The thing with my brother going to my brother's house, it's because I want to build some sort of tradition because I didn't really have a whole lot growing up. Yeah. You know? What about you? I don't think so. Any tradi- Christ- I don't think any, I have a big... Whether it's growing up or anything like that? Um, trying to figure out and be like, well, the December 6th thing was a kind of big tradition that we'd always do every year. Um, but as I've grown older, I found that all these traditions we do as a young child, just they don't, you know, they don't tickle my fancy. <laughs> or it's even hard to incorporate them because... Yeah, yeah. Um, I come from a broken home as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I would always do like uh, Christmas Eve at my mom's and like Christmas Day at my dad's and just flip flop it every year. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, there's as far dude, my family's super chill when it comes to holidays. We're not like big like we need to like take pictures together and we need to like uh, everybody needs yeah. to wear a Christmas sweater and you need yep. to be here and we need to go to church on Christmas. Uh, yep. My dad likes to do that. Okay. Um, but on my mom's side, it's like Christmas Day is literally just an excuse to lay on the couch all day and do fucking nothing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess that's our tradition is that holiday, our Christmas time is literally just like a break. It's like we don't do anything crazy. Like we don't plan any family activities. It's just pretty, pretty much just like chill all day. Yeah. That's cool. That's a tradition. Watch a football game or something like that. What about, uh, can you remember what's, what are some of the best and worst Christmas presents you ever oh. received? I remember one year. I was uh, in Michigan, in Grand Rapids, Michigan, by myself. I'm getting all marbly mouth. Uh, slow down, Israel. Slow down. Uh, yeah. Bought the uh, the caramel apple from Cracker Barrel. Caramel jar, caramel apples, and I made myself French toast and caramel apples, and that was like. And I saw Paycheck, starring Ben Affleck. This is not <laughs> a good movie. This is a John Woo film. Jesus, it's the most non gun oriented John Woo film ever, uh, and it was called Paycheck, and it was like. Not it's a good awesome. movie to see on Christmas Day. Yeah. Uh, but that was my Chris. That was probably the worst Christmas I think I've ever had. You know? I think one of the most memorable presents that I've received uh, was a bow and arrow set. And I think I've talked about this before. <laughs> you have. Yeah, I love was, that, I was, such, I was so into Lord of the Rings that, you know, on Christmas morning. My, and my, uh, my mom would go through, like, pretty much – no limit to make it seem like the most authentic experience so like we'd have all our presents underneath the tree and then we wake up on christmas and there would be like double the amount of presents mm. and they'd all be wrapped in like a very santa Clausy type of thing and like she milked the santa claus thing and wow. good honor um but i remember like one morning i came downstairs and uh you know 
uh, I saw all these new presents, and obviously, like, <laughs> as a kid, I'm like, girl! And there was all the labels on it. I was like, from mom, from dad, from whoever the fuck, you know? And these ones, some of them said, from Santa, but then there was this long package, and it said, from Legolas. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so I opened it up, and it was uh, it was a bow and arrow set in there. And I was like, hell yeah! That's so clever, man. It's That's so such a good present, Yeah, man. it was yeah. a very good present. Um, and I'm thinking... Uh, what are some other presents that I was just like, this is fucking awesome. You know, one thing that my brother does with his family, which is part of what makes it fun to go up every Christmas, is everybody always gets a book for Christmas. A book. Yeah, everybody always gets a book. I, I love that. I love that. It's a tradition. No matter who you are, the youngest to the oldest, everybody in the family, in addition to your other presents, you get a book. Mm, you know, which cool. I, I thought that was, that was super cool, you know. You know, and another present that I would say is the best present I ever got is uh, I recently got an Oculus. Yeah, yeah, yes, you did. Yeah, Israel bought That's me right. an Oculus for Christmas. Because I'm a good friend. Because he's a good friend. Uh, and well, you was... you were it. Yeah, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but like when Christmas comes around, I I have too many people in my life that I love and care about to get presents for everybody. So what I do is I just don't get anybody any presents. <laughs> Except for one person. One There's person. always one person that gets a present. It's like I won the lottery. Yeah, and you're yeah. the one. You're the one that got the present. Thanks, man. Year. I appreciate it. It's good. I'm <laughs> taking his real name to Disneyland for Christmas. Yeah, yeah. It was, it's only only right that I should get you something equally yeah. as awesome. Yeah, know? it's great. It's <laughs> awesome. Okay, man. Well, Christmas! Christmas time. Christmas time's good. Yeah, Christmas I like it. I, I, wait, let me just say, you know, like, I know we... We did our, uh, I feel it was like an anniversary or our 100th episode or something like that or whatever. Um, but Merry Christmas to all of you. Thank you guys for all your love and support, your emails, Thank things you. like that. Uh, getting in on the raffle that we're doing, you know, and, and uh, I just really appreciate it. Like, it's been a wild year in many respects. Uh, one of the highlights of my year has been really getting this, you know, podcast, podcast out the ground and run. Chris, thank you. For, Thanks, Chris. For Merry the, Christmas, Chris. The very idea. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Chris was the one. He's like, Chris hey, you guys want to? You guys gonna do a podcast? I'm like, uh, I guess. Like, I've never done a podcast. He's like, let's do it. Yeah, <laughs> and then we'll put it together. And here we are, a hundred thousand downloads plus later. I know, yeah. right? Thank so, you. Super cool. Close to Christmas. like 150 at this point. Woo! Yeah, we're at, yeah. yeah we're, we're getting. This is our 35th episode. Nice. 35. Only 35. Man, you guys. That's Only. They, well, I mean, like, we've I, probably done it. About a thousand times longer than any other pod, like a lot of other podcasts. But that's amazing. That's what I'm saying. It's like it, it. It seems I don't know in a good way that we've been doing this for a long time. Thirty five just doesn't seem like a, a lot of episodes to me, but it, it is. You know? It is like, a lot of episodes, uh, yeah. and I think that's I think that's amazing. So hopefully the hopefully the sky's the limit, man. I hope this right. is like the main thing. You know, we got so much going on. I hope this is like the one that like is like the banger. This is fun. You know? It's fun. It's super. And fun. then a big thank you to Amy. Yeah, our, thank you to Amy. Our, we're so thankful YouTube for you. Editor, and we're thankful our editor for who works yes. for peanuts. peanuts. Literally peanuts. We I all work pay for her money peanuts. at all. Yeah. None of us make anything. None of us <laughs> make anything. Yeah. We're not making anything. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, not that we do this for the money, folks. No, but, uh, we don't. It's no, but bad. for for those and like all the coffee, buy me coffee people, oh, thank all the you people who watched on YouTube, all that kind of stuff, like yeah. that all goes back literally back into to the podcast. Us, yeah. yeah, to fund it, we buying equipment and being self sustaining and stuff like that. This nice tree, this beautiful thank tree. Thank you for buying this tree. You didn't buy this tree. I've had yeah. this tree for years. He's had the tree. I literally I pu- I fold this up and I stuff it in my closet over there until the next Christmas. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna. I bought a fake tree too, and I have no idea what the fuck I'm gonna do with it. You just gotta find like, a countertop. I, I like it because I could put it on my countertop in my kitchen. It just take up a lot of room. Yeah, I, I literally just leave it there mm-hmm. and just keep the lights off until November first. So, yep, yeah. or December. <laughs> um, but you know what? One thing I think we we're gonna start doing here is yes. we're gonna we get a lot of those questions from y'all. Fan a lot questions. of you are very curious yep. as and have a lot of good insight and a lot of good comments. So I think we're gonna start answering some questions that yeah. we receive every episode now i got one question here we can do we'll do the question and then we'll do our game don't worry the game has not been forgotten. games going nowhere uh game ain't going nowhere uh we love those games but we have a fan question and uh so we'll try to incorporate at least one of these in into our shows uh, each show going forward all right this question comes from isaiah actually uh also known as nildris from my twitch community so oh, hi yeah. nildris uh what starship would you in- would you enlist in the space force to serve on as a commander of what? I, I I'm I'm thinking like any Star. any starship like any any ship from any fictionalized universe where there's a starship. So like you don't know, you know I don't think know this. No, well well here's the, well, you, you know <laughs> something you know anything any I'm thinking any if we had like a space force and it was a legit space force where it's like we're in space and ships. 
pick from among any of the sci-fi movies or shows that you've seen, what do you think you would want to serve as a commander of? Like, I'm going to go right away. I've been playing a lot of Mass Effect lately, mm. so I have to I have to go with the the ship from the uh, uh, oh gosh now now I'm not even now I'm totally I've been totally I'm totally playing, playing this, so this game. Uh, it's called the the Normandy. Gee whiz, man. I'm sorry, Gee, folks. Willikers. I'm sorry. I just I literally as I was saying that. Uh, getting ready to answer it, the answer left me. So Normandy, it's the main ship from the Mass Effect games, and it's it's Shepard's ship, and uh, my Shepard in my game is obviously the best Shepard that has ever existed, Jelly Bean, uh, ever. So um, just so everybody knows that. But uh, yeah, the Normandy, it's an awesome. It's an awesome ship. You get your crew together, you gather your crew from across the universe, all your mm-hmm. friends, uh, and and you just go and you just kill Reapers. It's awesome, man. And collectors, rapers, reapers, reapers. Rape. Just kill rapers. They do rape humanity of itself, so oh, okay. it's very. It is a violation of their humanity. So. Okay. So, well, rape. so for this question, is just any spaceship. Any spaceship. I want to command a garrison of Mandalorians. Mandalorians. Well, like, well, what ship would you be on? Would you be on Slave One? Would sure. you be on the Mandalorian I'll be ship? On that one. That one. <laughs> Slave One. You, you chain, kind of change it a little bit, but uh, we can't fit a garrison of Mandalorians Why? on there because Slave One's together. really, really small. Slave One's a really small ship. What's a bigger ship? What's a bigger ship? Uh, why don't you just like what do you commandeer? Razor a, Crest. I'll take a Razor the Mandalorian Crest. ship. Razor Crest. There you go. All right, I will command a, a ship. battalion of Mandalorians from a Razor. A Razor Crest. Crest. There you go. Ship. That is the answer to your question, Isaiah. That is the answer. We appreciate it. That'll be cool. Very much. I like that. I'm happy with that answer. Now, that being said, uh, it's time to transition to our game. Game time. Game time, baby. Christmas game time. I'm going to take this one. You're taking this one? Oh, wait. No, no, you're going to take this one. No, okay. I'm taking I'm this I'm not going to look I at it. I have the game. All right. I saw that I could you access You want to play it. a game? Time okay. to play the game. All right. You ready, Triple H? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. So, this game is called I Am Dreaming of a Red Christmas. <gasps> I'm going to give you a Christmas movie, a number, and you tell me if it's more or less than the number. Pretty Christmas simple. deaths? Like how many deaths in the movie? I got yeah. you. Okay. Give you All right, a cool. Christmas Body count number. Maybe, I got uh, you. maybe take that again, Cameron. Say I'm gonna give you this. This mo- or this game's all about body counts. Okay. Sorry, I see. I didn't cool. include that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Here we go. This game is called I'm Dreaming of a Red uh, Christmas uh, because this game is all about body counts. Okay, all right. Body counts, baby. Dead bodies. Let the bodies hit the flow. Let, Let the, the bodies, bodies hit, hit the, the, flow. The, the, the tinsel decorated Yes, and floor. I'm going to give you a Christmas movie, and you're going to give me a number of deaths in no, that. No, 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 no. No? You're going to give him the name of the movie and a number and he's going to tell you if it's higher or lower than the number you give. Okay. Oh, okay. So this game is all about body counts. Yes, let the bodies hit the floor. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you a Christmas movie, a number, and you tell me if it's more or less than that number. I'm going to tell you if the body count's higher or lower yep. than the number you gave me. Okay, cool. Yes, sir. Gotcha, gotcha. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay, we'll just see how ready you are. Wait. With our first one. I'm not ready. Okay, now I'm ready. Okay, now you're ready. All right, so Die Hard, since it is a Christmas movie. Oh, man, I should know this. I and the know. number is... 20. Is the body count higher or lower? And we're talking total deaths, not total just deaths. who John McCain cl- McClane killed. Total So like deaths. the FBI agents that get incinerated in the helicopter, the people in yep. the uh, ATV. Yep. Okay. Oh, man. Mm. So I'm going to say that more it's... More or less than 20. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I think it's probably lower because the deaths are pretty awesome and spectacular, but... I don't think that there are that many. Like, I think it could be close, but I think it's probably lower, like maybe 15 or something like that. So I'm going to say lower. All right. Well, you are completely wrong. Duh! So it is higher than 20, and Die Hard has a total of 23 deaths. Oh, so, so it wasn't, ju- I wasn't that far off, just in the wrong that, direction. Yeah, wrong direction. Okay, there. I got you. I got okay. You. But not bad. I but should terrible. probably just say higher for every single one of these. <laughs> I don't know. Mm, bold strategy. Okay, next movie, which is, we mentioned this movie, Black Christmas. Oh, Black Christmas. And the original the, or, because I know they did a remake. The original. Okay, okay cool. Yes. So, and the so number for this one is 10. Higher Ooh. or lower than 10? Dang it. Black um, Christmas. 
I don't remember there being a lot of deaths in this one. It was it was like a more of a thriller kind of mystery kind of thing. I'm going to say lower. I'm going to say lower because I think it was like four or five or something like that. Correct. Hey. All right. There was only seven deaths okay. in Black Christmas. So you got that one right. All right. All right. So All right. you're one for two right It's funny because I, I don't get the one that I'm a fan of, and I get the one that I'm not a fan of. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. So moving on. And this one, surprisingly, is a Christmas movie, but it has to fall under the horror category if you're into that type of stuff. Right. Gremlins. Oh, Gremlins. Man, we didn't talk about Gremlins. We oh, didn't talk yeah. about Gremlins. But, yeah, it definitely does take place during Christmas time. is not the? It is a Christmas present. It is. Right? It, it, that's a heavy Christmas movie. That's a that's heavy all, Christmas Christmas is all over that. Yeah. There's, there's, I can't believe we didn't talk about that. It's a dark. Gremlins 100% Christmas movie. Yeah, 100%, 100% Christmas. Christmas. Well, we're talking about it now, so it's okay. Yeah. Okay, now we're talking about it. Okay, so Gremlins, nice. and the number for Gremlins is 50. 50? 50. It's got to be way lower. It's got to be way lower, because I know they, they don't actually kill a lot of people. They mess with a lot of people, right, uh, and mess a lot of things up. But I know the old lady in, like, the electric chair, like, the electric moving chair on the on the stairs, they, like, they like mess with the wiring, and it blasts her out the front, the front window, the second-story window. Uh, I'm going to say lower. I'm going to say, well, no, whoa, whoa, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're including gremlin deaths. Are we well, including a, gremlin yeah. deaths? I will read you description again. This game is all about body counts. Okay, body count. Okay, I'm going to say higher. Because when they blow up that, that, that movie theater, man, there's a lot of gremlin deaths, you know. Um, so I'm going to say higher. Nice save. Yes. You were going down a rabbit hole because, yes, gremlin bodies count as bodies. A lot of, so, lot of gremlin bodies hit that proverbial Christmas Exactly. Floor. So it is higher because they had 256 <laughs> There's a count for deaths. that? Oh, yes, my gosh. There is a count. There's a count for everything. I wonder if there's more in the sequel. I like the sequel, too. Okay. A little bit goofier, but. A little, yeah, I do like because there's a lot of different types of gremlins. There's like the spider one, the electricity one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it one. Okay, so next one we have Batman Returns. Okay. And the number is 35. 35? Oh, brother. I almost believe it because. Uh, I, why am I thinking of Christopher Walken's son in that? Go, Dad, save yourself! He does a good. Christopher Walken is my dad impression. The actor that plays him. Uh, Christopher Walken's son. Anyway. Uh, okay, the clown. The clown. Exploding clown guy. There's uh, there's there's penguin. There's the... Exploding clown guy. Yeah. Are you going to literally go through every single one? <laughs> I'm just trying to get a rough number in my in my head. There's the model lady that falls off the cliff or off the building. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of freaks. Like yeah. the freak shows that die. Freak show guys that die. Yeah. Now, do they get injured or do they get killed? Because he Batman. injures some and he kills some. He lights that one dude on fire. I'm going to say, how many, what's the number you gave me? 35? 35. 35? Is it higher or lower? I'm going to say higher because if we're counting penguin deaths, there's a lot of penguin deaths at the end because they fire the missiles and everything like gets destroyed and stuff like that. I'm assuming that there are some penguin deaths in there. So let's say higher. Okay. Well, that is incorrect. Ah! It is lower with only 18 deaths. Mm, in the movie. I wonder if they follow their own rules because I mean I think a lot of penguins die in that movie. You think a lot of penguins? Yeah, a lot of or is or is come, Ben come back counting the penguins? We're not counting them. No, gremlins have personality. They can talk. You know, they're right. penguins have personality. Nobody cares about uh, penguins. We're not counting the penguins. <laughs> they have personality though. Benedict I Cumberbatch. Let you, Benedict Cumberbatch would say penguins. You, I won't let you not. I won't let you dehumanize, I won't dehumanize these penguins, penguins, man. Human. Penguins aren't humans. <laughs> They're penguins. Yeah. I won't let you de-penguinize these penguins. De these dudes. I mean, there was an entire series called Meerkat Manor. <laughs> penguins are meerkats, had... not penguins. Peng yeah, but they had personality, Chris. Penguins are people, too, okay? Yeah, penguins uh, are people. But, okay. unfortunately, there is not a, a confirmed count of how many penguins died okay. in that house fire. All right. Okay. But, penguin anyways, lives moving matter. on. Penguin lives do matter. So, it's a wonderful life. Oh, it's a while. I just saw that for the first time last year. Really? Yeah, I okay. can't believe it's been so long. It's a good movie. It's well, the number movie. for It's a Wonderful Life for Body Counts is one. Is it higher or lower? Oh, man. Um, I'm going to say higher because didn't doesn't like his – somebody like one of the owners die or something of a bank or something like that? Um I'm going to say higher because he does technically kill himself, but then he comes back to, or he wants to kill himself 
and then he comes. So he doesn't actually kill himself. He just sees what life would be like if he was dead. I'm gonna say higher. That is correct. It okay. is higher. <laughs> Two people die oh, in okay. the movie. So George's father, okay, and the kamikaze pilot that George's brother shoots down. Oh, <laughs> you're right. You're right. He comes back from the war. Chris That's is right. so proud of that one. I, I, well, I looked I just, over and your face is just gleaming because the article I was reading it was like telling body counts in holiday movies. It said, if you really want to get technical and It's a Wonderful Life, you got to count the theoretical universe where George Bailey never existed. Oh. So if he never existed, he didn't save his brother from drowning. So his brother never shot down the kamikaze pilot. So the kamikaze pilot plowed into the ship and blew it up. And he's like, just guessing that ship probably had like 6,000 people on it. <laughs> <laughs> so they said It's a Wonderful Life had 6,000 people. And I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> that's insane. But that, Yeah, that's a still, complete insanity. That's, so that's why I was smiling. That's awesome. What a great that's awesome. pathway of logic. I love that's that. Sweet. Yeah. Well, good, man. You did good. You got most <laughs> of these, I okay, think. Okay, right? all right. I think you only missed, what, two or three? I can't believe I didn't get Die Hard. Or, yeah, you know, that's okay. It's all right. I still there's love always Die next Hard. Year. There's always next year. Yeah, there's no short. I'll be watching Die Hard a lot so yeah. from now on. I know. I still haven't wa- I haven't. I still haven't watched it this month. I'm surprised. I tried watching it last yeah, night. Yeah, I got to watch it. Like, no, I don't want to watch Die Hard. Maybe we can watch it tonight before we take off for Arizona with our... Yeah. Anyway. Um... Well, that's, that's all it. the time that's we have, it, folks. <laughs> Merry we, Christmas Merry to everybody. Merry Christmas to all of you out there listening from your cars. We hope that you are either driving safe with yeah. chains if you're in snow. If you're in snow. It, is, uh, it might be a white Christmas here. Yep. It's, uh, the weather's unpredictable. But thank you again for listening, and we hope that you guys all have a wonderful Christmas and a fast approaching new year Boy, it's coming baby it's always coming set those goals crush them make your dreams a reality we'll be there to cheer you on folks we got a lot of fun stuff coming up for the podcast too so yeah we do next year is going to be freaking awesome yeah a lot of cool stuff uh so uh new new podcast episode every wednesday you know this uh, uh the youtube episodes are coming fast and furious as well go check yep. out the youtube always extra content with the youtube stuff um if you want to follow us, go to PCFM, PCFM Podcast on IG. Uh, check out our Twitter. And we you, I will also love to hear from you through email, the electronic mails, PCFMPodcast at gmail.com. We have a new channel, or we have a channel up, uh, Shift Fire. Yep. Me and Cameron exploring and appreciating military lifestyle. And you can hang out with me on twitch.tv slash myhappyself. Yeah. And if you want to hang out with me, you can find me on Instagram at Cameron C. Fath or on my streetwear page, Kit God. And on Instagram, that's Kit God Apparel. And our website, www.kitgodapparel.com. Thank you guys for listening. We wish you a Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. and cue music. Merry Christmas.